Hey everybody, welcome to DBS Films Podcast. My name is Kellen, with me as always is my brother Brendan, and together we make movies with DBS Films. Today's episode, we're going into part two of the overall process for making our newest feature, The Force of Death, which should be live soon, could be live now. We will all find out next week a little bit more details. But this episode, we want to basically go in the production and post-production elements of filmmaking, kind of give you guys an overview of what that was like. Again, we do have much more detailed episodes about the production, a day-by-day breakdown, what exactly happened. But we always like to give you guys overall high-level concepts, especially for any indie filmmakers out there, just in case you want to get an idea on how you can handle handle such a behemoth as is making a movie so first episode we went through basically the pre-production process of writing casting getting everything together talked about how it's you know one of the bigger ideas that we had so with one of the bigger ideas that we had you know i I always remember we started doing this podcast um basically i think a month or two before we went to film it and i remember interviewing you the day before and saying how you feeling you're like i feel very nervous because this was Definitely quite the project. It was a very, very, very big script, big set. And I think one of the bigger things is, you know, we did have some ways to kind of divvy up in case we had to do pickups, but Girl in Cabin 13, we always knew from the beginning the climax was basically going to get shifted to a new location. Haunting the Murder House, you got me in a van, you got 20% of the movies right there. Force of Death had a unique element to it where you know if you miss something or we don't get something it could really hurt us when it comes to a reshoot so how exactly were you filming or feeling in that moment again just for everyone to hear i mean beforehand i was a little bit nervous um just be just an ambitious movie i never really felt comfortable with the script um and i had put a lot of time and effort into trying to learn how to you know shoot this movie and cheat the netflix look make it look very cinematic wasn't very happy with how I shot Murder House, so I learned from it. But a lot of these techniques, you're using very fast lenses. You're trying to get like that blurred background, you know, and you're cheating um, with our ten thousand dollar lenses. What Netflix is using three hundred, four hundred thousand dollar lens kits. Um, so it's very difficult to do that. But I tried my best to try and just mimic that kind of um, look, and I'm very happy with how. Forest of Death, or uh, yeah, Forest of Death turned out. I think it looks very cinematic. I think if you hold it up to a lot of low budget uh, Netflix movies, Hulu movies, um, and even like HBO and Showtime, some of that stuff, it looks very similar to it. Um, so we were very lucky to essentially recreate that uh, on a one tenth, one one hundredth of the budget. And, you know, if we go back to cinematic movies in the future, I'm definitely going to use those techniques again. Um, That being said, they're very difficult to pull off. Um, Focus is very difficult. I don't have a focus puller. Um, We're a lot of run and gun stuff. Um, Lighting is always very tricky for these kind of movies Um, just because we don't have a lighting crew. We rely on pretty much just Dylan moving the lights. Um. But, you know, we were able to pull it off. We shot this whole movie, I think, six or seven days. Um, And it was a very difficult shoot, but we got through it. We learned a lot from it. And I think, honestly, that this movie gave me a lot of confidence um, when I left set. Gave me a lot of confidence in the editing room because it's very difficult to edit this movie. But, you know, moving with that kind of knowledge, going through this whole process, a very, very difficult process... I think the jump from this movie to Into the Forest to the Roger Project, I think you're going to see a a large jump in just quality, not only in screenplay, but production. And then obviously the speed and editing, which we're seeing now with Into the Forest 2 um, coming very close to getting a Discord launch. Yeah, it really is the case, you know, it's a lot of effort to pull off. And I think it's one of the reasons that we did shift over more so to found footage was just cinematic is, is is quite the beast and quite the burden. And I will say, though, overall, it was a lot of work, but of all the shoots where things kind of went right when we really needed them to go right, I think the force of death is probably up there in the top of it because there was a lot of things that had to happen. We had a lot of days that had to you know move forward. We had a tight schedule for all of the team. Everyone was able to do it. And really, the only major wrench was kind of the first day trying to figure our stuff out. And as I mentioned the first episode – you know, that initially looking at that, the location we had, we're like, how do we film a movie in here? But we were able to really almost make it into three different locations, four different locations, 
when you count the phone calls and everything. So we were able to kind of really think on our feet there. But I think the biggest thing was every single day we needed to execute and any kind of issue really would have hurt us. I think that was one of those days where we really did need, you know, or one of the shoots where like having the onset editor really helps out just to double check that. Because kind of, as I was mentioning in the beginning, this was one where, you know, as opposed to the Roger files where like we don't have something, we just go back out there with Ben and get it. For the most part, we have a lot of this stuff. We have that flexibility. Getting a pickup with the force of death, especially a pickup that needed all four characters would have been like a 50% increase in the budget like that. So I would guess, you know, how are your feelings and thoughts of kind of how that shoot went? Because I think, again, we had a lot, but we were very effective every day with it. Yeah, I think this was the first time we scheduled something properly. Um, we used every minute of this shoot down to the end. I know we wrapped um, with the sun coming up. I think, you know, between wrapping and then me driving home is like a 27, 28 hour day. Um, but that's what you want, man. You want to use every single minute. If you have time left over, then you didn't schedule properly. And if you're short, then obviously that's really bad and you didn't schedule properly. This one ended right when we got kicked out of that Airbnb. Um, so I was really happy with um, how everything, you know, turned out. Um, I think scheduling is probably the most important thing. It takes a lot of skill to learn how to do these things. But I think everything that we did in pre-production set us up to succeed. And I think that, you know, the actors came in, did a fantastic job. The crew did a fantastic job. And, you know, we got a very, very solid movie, a very good looking movie done in seven days, which is pretty incredible for how technical that movie was. There were multiple scenes that required multiple camera angles, required multiple lens changes. And I just remember there's one scene in the climax in particular where it's just like painstaking. Like you have to get the insert of the doorknob. You have to get facial reaction. You have to get a wide, you have to get another shot. And like these things can add up and a simple scene could have almost 30 different shots to actually get done and you can really sink yourself. So, you know, I was very proud of this one. Um, that being said, found footage is much easier because there's only really one take. And so you don't really need to do anything as, as far as like crazy editing. But, uh, you know, going back and editing this movie, I had everything that I needed and more to make this a really good movie. And I think that kind of shows in the final product. Yeah, it really was having all the ingredients there. And on top of that, we even managed to have enough time to go ahead and do a few retakes of a few scenes just to add a few uh, details in them to really kind of improve upon uh, just the little fight interactions and making those look better. And we had like a little series of like pickups that we had to do. But yeah, that was one where the sun was coming up. This is a fun little drive back, making sure you're caffeinated. And it was just something where that was quite the environment to to make a movie and just the amount that we filmed really. So that leads us to the next phase, which is post-production. And we always mention that this is the most important process of filmmaking. This is where you actually make the movie. This is where it actually comes together. This is where you actually have to put in a lot of the work and deal with what you have. And I would say for Shapeshift, you know, this was one where early on making the rough, I was confident in saying, hey, the pacing's there. I really like it. I think it's our best one. Stand by that. Still say it's the best one. Although Into the Forest 2 is going to dethrone it really soon. Um, but I think one thing that, you know, stuck out to me with at least the first edit was there weren't any major issues, you know, usually, and even I think we had this honestly with girl and cabin 13, there weren't really any major issues. Um, you know, like it was all there, but this was the first one where I really felt like there was more consistent hits than misses. Whereas for like murder house, I kind of knew things were slowing down with EMF. They were kind of slowing down with Ouija. And then also I think the other thing that happened for me with murder house is like, I just got sick of taking a look at like a dark house for so long. So I feel like I was kind of getting those vibes, but with, with, with uh, Force of Death, I always thought it was just really, really good. I felt like the hard part was like, what of the good do you use? You know, it was one of those things where we had a lot of really, really good shots. We had some ones that are there. There weren't as many technical difficulties, but still in a cinematic environment, when I have one angle, another angle, a wide, a close up, all of these things, you can almost having all of those different options make it a little bit harder than, say, you know, a haunting of the Morgan estate where it's just like, well, this is the only usable thing that we have so this is the scene yeah and i think 
the issue with Shapeshifter, why it took so long is I do agree the pacing was done very quickly. So we had a very quick pacing cut. I was very happy with the pacing. The problem was like a lot of the scares just needed to be paced properly. And like you mentioned before, we really never had proper coverage or the ability to really slow down or speed up some of these scare scenes. So it's always been an issue with us and it still continues to be an issue where the pop scares either feel cheap or the suspense isn't built up properly. But I think we did a really good job of building the the suspense on these. I think the main problem with Shapeshifter was the intro was very, very messy. Um, it was very, very long um, to give you an, ex- to give you an idea the intro was about six or seven minutes long. And in the final release cut, um, it turned out to be about two and a half minutes. Poor Kel got cut down pretty hard on that one, but it's just, you got to hit the intros and, you know, we're always chasing the, the Willow intro, which is like one of our better intros, but man, I think we just got lucky with that one. It's very hard to pull that stuff off. Um, so we went with the shorter version and, you know, the feedback has been great. Everyone's like, that intro is great. The intro is great. The intro is great. Little do they know we spent three or four months really beating that thing down, trying every different possible Avenue to get it to that point. But I mean, even the smaller stuff, just the pop scares, the fight, the final fights in the climax, um, them running through the woods at the end took a really long time just to pace it out properly because we were just kind of missing, um, like the monsters kind of element in there. Like we were kind of drawing that out because we had to cut that intro scene. We have to make it get to an hour 15. I had to make a decision on where to lengthen this movie. Um, and I chose the forest. Um, so, you know, it just, it was a lot of little things that just needed to be fine tuned. Um, but I also think I was kind of drowning in over coverage. And I think that this is a thing is, when you're editing a movie, you have millions of different choices and you'll never feel good about it. Um, I'll make a scene and I'll cut it and I'll watch it a few times. And I'll be like, ah, oh, something's wrong with that. Let me go back and scrap it and spend a whole bunch of time, you know, working on it, working on it, working on it. Then I send it back to Kel and he's like, this is worse. So like, there's a lot of that stuff. And I think moving on, what I learned from Shapeshifter is like, you got to pick a direction right away and you got to move with it. And unless somebody says something that, you know, is a really good point where there's something really fundamentally wrong with the scene, just roll with it. You can sit there and just beat it and continue to work on it consistently. And there's a very good chance that it will never get better. And I think that this isn't a problem with us. I think it's a problem with a lot of filmmakers where they're, instead of releasing the movie, they'll spend a year just working on it, working on it, working on it. And the gain that you get is maybe very incremental where the gain of just uploading it and getting that feedback and moving on to the next project is just much better. Um, So I learned from this and this is why Into the Forest 2.0 is going to be up much sooner just because number one, we don't have as much coverage. Found footage is a little bit different because we're using like Warner's, but I've learned from this and, you know, I'm picking a direction, I'm sticking with it and Unless the Discord and the people that we show the movie have some kind of fundamental reason for me to change it, you know, this is what we're going to do. Yeah, I mean, there really is something to stress with a lot of um, filmmakers out there is like, don't get caught up in in what you think it needs to be. You just kind of have to shoot that air and at some point let go. You know, it, it's it's got to go on its own, move on to the next project. And that's one of the biggest benefits that we always mention about having multiple movies and productions. Easy to take your mind off of that, whereas you can get lost in the abyss of editing, especially cinematic So, you know, the last part I really kind of want to just draw on is the marketing element to it. And I will say, you know, we're getting good feedback when it comes from like the name, when it comes from the feel, when it comes from the vibes. And really, it is that 70s, 80s horror film is what we're kind of, you know, looking at when it comes to a feel of it. I think the trailer came together really, really well with Roger doing that amazing uh, uh, performance on the campfire in the sense of just kind of setting everything up. But it's also something we've never done before concept wise. So there's always a missing question mark to the equation with everything said and done, you know, how, how are you, or what are your thoughts on kind of the poster, the blurb and everything, you know, would you say this is definitely the strongest one that we have set? Were you more comfortable about other ones? No, this is definitely from all our data. This is by far our 
highest converting blurb title and poster. So say what you want about the poster and the title. Um, it's our highest one. Like it's the most clickable one. I have no issues with getting organic traffic to this one. I think what's going to be interesting is just to see, you know, people's reaction to this movie. I think it's going to kind of be a little bit polarizing. I think people who grew up with seventies and eighties horror, who are fans of that kind of style, will really like this one. I think the nostalgia factor will kind of come up with it. People who grew up on the more gritty, realistic stuff that's come out in the past 10, 15 years, I think are going to hate this movie. Um, I just think that's what's going to happen. That being said, love it or hate it, it doesn't matter. It's your opinion. Just watch it all the way through. And that's our goal is to just get people to watch the movie, engage it. A five star or one star, it doesn't matter as long as people are engaging. They're motivated by watching this movie to give it a, you know, a rating. The worst thing could be someone watches it and then turns it off in the first 10 minutes, doesn't watch it at all. Um, so... I'm excited to see that kind of stuff. I'm excited to see the feedback. Um, obviously, we're going to be monitoring this um, very, very closely. We have all the ads and everything ready to go. This will be our biggest launch yet. Um, but as always, I always read all the reviews that you know make sense. Um, the one star, I turned it off because it sucks. It's low budget. Um, those people don't really do anything. But if you're going to one star one of our movies, like at least go into depth, tell me what you liked, what you didn't like, um, because we can make a better version of this movie. We can get better. Those kind of reviews that kind of break down everything help me out a lot. And I always search for them. Um, if you're just going to be a troll, you know, I really can't help you out. But, um, you know, we're going to have the back end discord. So we should get a lot of five star, you know, a lot of reviews very, very quickly. A lot of purchases really quickly. But I mean, this is is game time. Like what's going to happen, you know, cause it takes so long to get the money back. The results of this movie are pretty much going to, cause I think we'll get our money in like October, November, how well this movie does will determine, you know, what we're going to do in 2024. So I'm really hoping for an all out launch, you know, beating number 15, which is murder house is super important. We're up against Megan. We're up against the menu. We're up against some really good horror movies. So I think it's, a good test to see where we are in the marketplace. Obviously we are one of the larger indie studios as far as how we could push these things, but you know, we really want to try and get that top 10. Hopefully um, with each spot, it's exponential gain and all this money is going back into either making movies, casting more people from the discord or just going back to community events. So if you're listening to this right now, um, forever grateful. If, if you could purchase this support indie horror, um, so we can get better, we can make better movies and we can cast more people. That's it. It is game time when it comes to getting these reviews and everything like that. So we do appreciate everyone that is looking out there. I think the last thing I'm kind of curious about is, you know, there's always the discord. We have the feedback there, which is always really, really, you know, refreshing and great to see. Um, I would say they're, you know, the type of fans that we're looking for, but I'm also curious is kind of like the overall reaction and also kind of the data that we're going to be getting, you know, I do think it is clickable. I think the trailer is good. I think all that's there. I'm kind of curious, you know, what are your thoughts where one, what do you think people are going to say? And then the last question will be, you know, how do, what do you kind of want to change for like the next one? So I think people are going to want more shapeshifter personally. Now this could just be me, but I kind of feel like with the 70s style of thing, you almost get more of a bigger climactic special effects type thing. And we know, Hey, that's budget. So there's not much you can do there. But in my opinion, I think that's kind of the element that it's missing is like that evil dead breakdown where like, you know, Dylan, he did make a torch, but he, I think he needed an extra shotgun or something like that to really kind of push it over the edge. Um, some type of battle or something there. Cause I think anytime you go down the seventies, eighties rabbit hole, I think that's what you're expecting. You know, I think that's kind of the counter that we can see with like a murder house or a found footage movie is people are more grounded in the realism. But I feel like for like a seventies or eighties movie, you almost want that full gas moment. So what are your thoughts? What do you think some of the reviews once these get out there might, might start saying, well, again, I think it's going to be polarizing. I think the people who grew up on the seventies and eighties style of horror, um, we'll get the movie. They'll get the tropes. They'll get the humor. They'll get the upbeat music. Um, you know, they'll get like a cool movie that's made in that style. I think the people who you know like realistic horror, like myself, um, 
are going to watch this movie and be like, this is cheesy. These jokes are lame. Why is there upbeat music in the horror movie when this is supposed to be a horror movie? Um, they're not going to get that. And I think that's going to show in the one stars. Um, that being said, I think both camps are going to want like a little bit more. Uh, as I mentioned, I believe in the last episode, that seems to be the feedback. They want more shapeshifter. They want more creature. They want more mystery element of who the shapeshifter is, which is a good thing because these those are easy fixes. I could easily make either a sequel to this movie or make another 2.0 version of this movie, and I could add all that depth. So if that's the number one feedback, and the feedback is, hey, I wanted more. I want more from this movie. That is a good problem to have. I'll be super excited if those are the reviews that are coming in because we can fix that stuff very, very quickly. But I do think it's going to be a polarizing movie. Um, I'm more interested in seeing if people just resonate to this movie, if it performs well on organic traffic. Um, if it does, then we can fix it and make it a better movie because I think there's a really cool concept in here. I think it's a great 1.0 version of this movie. I think it's paced properly. It's very kind of like watered down. We kind of just go from point A to B. I think another movie, I think you just have to have like a crazier creature, something more of a threat to them. I think that's my biggest issue with this movie is that, yes, you're watching something stalk them, but I think someone needs to die early on and have a crazy kind of creature kind of effect in there. Um, just to raise the stakes and get that tension all the way throughout. And I think uh, you'll have a really good movie, but man, I would love to do a gritty version of this movie. I think I could pull it off really well. I already have ideas going. We have a 2.0 sequel outline for this movie. That's really, really cool. That picks up with Roger. So there's a lot of cool things that could spring from this project. But once again, we got to see that people like it. We got to see that it's rising the charts and I got to get that feedback. I mean, this is the most beneficial thing for an indie filmmaker is to upload a project and get feedback from it. So five star, one star, whatever you want to review. Um, I'm super grateful. They took the time to watch this movie and, you know, I'm hoping that the 2.0 version is better and, you, and you'll find a movie that you guys like. Yeah. I think the biggest thing I'm looking forward to is potentially having more people. You know, I think having four people to have a shapeshifter move around, you can really spice up the odds having potentially eight. You know, we already have some ideas of what happens if you kill someone that actually wasn't the shapeshifter. Well, then what does that mean for you? And so on and so forth. So there's a lot of fun stuff, but again, biggest thing to do guys, best thing you can do for us is keep an eye out in our discord for the launch of the forest of death. Supporting us means the world to us. And it just means that we're going to get bigger, make more movies, make better movies and cast more people. So all these things, we're going to continue to do as we grow and thrive as dbs films we're excited to have you guys along for the journey but until then have a good one